So there is a question that I get asked probably more than all of the others, and it goes a little something like this. So there's this person from my work or from my school or from my friend group or from wherever. This person is really, really attractive and or smart and or nice and or funny. And I think I really like them, but I don't know if this person likes me back. I have no idea if they're gay or lesbian or bi or pan or whatever. I want to ask them out, but I don't know how. What do I do? Okay, so here's the thing. I have not been single for over six years now. And to be honest, even when I was single, I really wasn't that good at flirting. But that being said, I have learned a thing or two from my soon-to-be husband, as well as from watching some of my friends go through the process. So, since Valentine's Day is pretty much here, and since some of you guys may be caught up in the spirit of romance, allow me to give you some of my own personal insights it's on. So there are a few parts to this question. The first of which deals with a person that you like and their possible sexual orientation. How do you tell a person's orientation just by observing them? Short answer is you can't. There's no method that I know of that can detect a person's sexual orientation without fail every single time. I don't care how they look, I don't care how they act, I don't care how they dress. No method is going to be 100% accurate. So does that mean you just flat out ask the person? Well, aside from that being a really, really awkward way to start a conversation, the other person may or may not be comfortable giving you an answer, be it because they're not sure yet or they just don't want to share. So how do we address this? Remember when I made that little video about sexual orientation where I talked about how it's bad to think of stuff in binaries? Well, I lied a little bit. Kind of. There is one binary that you can rely on in this situation. It doesn't matter who you are interested in, you can separate everyone in the world into one of two categories. Interested and not interested. And this sorting method works well because you don't need to know the person's orientation. Hell, they don't even need to know their orientation. The only question that both of you guys need to be able to answer is, are they into you at all? That is how my relationship started. I was still in the process of coming to terms with my bisexuality when I met my guy. And yes, I even told him when we met that I was straight. Womp womp, I know. But he was into me, as it turns out, and I was into him. So so we went out and long story short, we've been doing it nonstop ever since. So now it's your turn. You see the person, you like the person. So how do you get them to talk to you? Whatever you do, do not use a pickup line. Hey babe, are you a large positive integer? Because I want to divide you up and see how many times eight goes into you. Tragic, I know. In my almost three decades on this planet, I have never seen a pickup line go well. I'm not kidding when I say you probably have better luck using a knock-knock joke. Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't try to use a pickup line? In my experience, the best thing to do is, surprise, surprise, have an actual conversation with the person. I know, shocking. But a conversation about what? There's two different approaches that I found to be most effective. The first is what I like to call the foot in the door. And that's where you make it a point to try to start a conversation that is completely and utterly benign and completely unrelated to anything romantic. This method is especially easy if the person that you're trying to talk to is someone that you know from work or school or whatever. Whatever. Uh, hey, do you know what chapters we had to read for tomorrow? But what if you just met the person? You can still use this method. You just have to be smart about the conversation that you try to start. Do not try to talk about anything that's too obscure. So what do you think is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? It's got to be something that they can participate in easily. And avoid saying something that's too contentious or opinionated. God, don't you hate this song? Are you kidding? I love this song. From what I've witnessed, it's best that the conversation starts around something that is in the room with both of you. <sighs> We've been waiting like 10 minutes. What do you think we gotta do to get the bartender to notice us? Bonus points if that question can somehow include a compliment. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a bother or anything, but your shirt is amazing. Where did you get it? Boom! There you have it, a foot in the door. You're still a ways away from choosing a wedding date, but it is a start. So now that you are actually talking to the person, try your best to ease the conversation along for as long as possible, and then watch for signs of possible interest. Do they seem willing to talk, or do you keep having to coax stuff out of them? Are they smiling? Are their shoulders facing towards you? Are they leaning in? Are they laughing whenever you think you're being funny? Any of those are signs that they could possibly be interested. 
possibly. Never assume that someone is interested in you unless they tell you outright. And even if they are interested in you, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are interested in engaging in certain activities with you. So definitely keep that in mind. But if you do make it a few minutes without the other person running off, then that is a good sign. And if you are really good, you have managed to use that conversation to find something that the two of you have in common. My friend just did this amazing hike in Death Valley. My God, I love hiking. My God, me too. Nice work. So now it might be time to test the waters with a question along the lines of this. So listen, it's been really nice chatting and you seem really, really awesome. So would you maybe want to like hang out sometime? Maybe grab like coffee or lunch or something? And if you found something that you have in common, maybe you can even use that to your advantage. Maybe we could like go for a hike sometime. You are by no means guaranteed a yes, but at least your chances have improved a bit. In short, that's how foot in the door works. The second approach is a lot simpler, a lot bolder, and pretty much the opposite of the first. I call it the door in the face. And it's basically where you skip all the small talk and just get right to the question. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt anything, but I just saw you across the party and you're incredibly handsome and you seem really cool and I was uh, just wondering if you wanted to maybe hang out sometime. Like I said, a lot more direct and a lot riskier. But if you're the kind of person who gets more and more nervous when you try to have a conversation with someone that you like, then it might be a good idea to just rip that bandage off. And some people that I know actually prefer this direct approach rather than trying to force some small talk. They find the honesty refreshing. Not to mention it takes guts to use that approach. And that can be sexy too, provided that you do it right. Notice how it was still polite, still complimentary. Either way, you're taking a risk by starting a conversation. And at least with this method, you'll have your answer sooner. But no matter which approach you use, there are a couple things that you really need to keep in mind. First off, notice how I made sure to use the phrase hang out instead of phrases like go out or God forbid the word date. I learned that after my man successfully wooed me. We were dating for months before we actually used the word. And that's just because the word carries so much expectation with it. So many people think of a date as like a job interview or an audition to be someone's spouse. When all it needs to be is just two people enjoying each other's company. That's why I would personally avoid using the word at first, but that's just me. Second, it is okay to be nervous. It's even okay if you show a little bit of nerves. A lot of people find it endearing for one, and for two, there's a decent chance that they're nervous too. So if they can see a little hint of nerves, then they know that they're not the only ones who might be feeling a little bit of butterflies. But RJ, confidence is sexy. I agree, person who looks just like me, but only in the right amount. Out. Too much confidence and you wind up looking like a D-bag. And the last thing that you want to do is make the other person feel like they're pressured or that they're somehow backed into a corner, which can definitely happen if you come on way too strong. And that's never sexy. And I personally think that you're already showing enough confidence by making the approach, but again, that's just me. Third, and probably most importantly, it is very, 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 very important that you not take rejection personally. I know, much, much easier said than done. But hear me out. If the other person is not interested in you for whatever reason, then the chances are virtually zero that you're going to be able to have a relationship with them. That's just the reality. So in the long run, rejection actually turns into a good thing since it means that you're no longer wasting time pursuing something that's just never going to work. And you don't deserve to have your time wasted. And if and when you do finally find a relationship that works, all that past rejection suddenly seems really silly. But I mean, does rejection still suck? Absolutely. But at least that can help give it a little bit of perspective and help it sting a little bit less. All right, so I hope that you guys found these tips to be useful. Let me know in the comments below if any of them have worked for you or if you have any other tips that you'd like to offer the class. Don't forget to thumb me up if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications so that you do not miss a video. I will see you guys next week with another one. Until then, my name is RJ, not Adam. Thank you so much for watching.